next step and say, what happens? How can we restore dignity and hope to somebody in that particular situation? Once we've healed them, what do we do? But how do we follow up? What is the pastoral care that's needed? And I hope you notice that, uh, you know, when he says, just make one, just make one clay pot. Some believe the line of practice. 
tells that a young man who had lost a leg came to the Buddhist monastery. He was extremely angry at life. He drew pictures of cracked vases and damaged things. He found inner peace and changed his outlook, but still drew both broken vases. One day his master asked, why do you still draw a crack in the vases? Are you not whole? The young man replied, yes, and so are the vases. The crack is how the light gets in. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Now sometimes we have to make sure that we're good enough or are prepared enough before we try something. Some of this song is saying. Tess Starchesky writes in a blog called Beauty and Brokenness. She says, I have a wonderful friend who is gentle and kind, insightful and funny. She is also deeply wounded in growing up with a cruelly, from growing up with a cruelly abusive father. In fact, sometimes she feels so broken that she doubts that she is fit to be in relationship with others. When she confided this to me, I wanted to tell her that it's the very brokenness which is her strength and her gift. It is her honest relationship with her own pain that allows her to be such an accomplished presence for the suffering of others. In our culture, when we think of beauty, we think of perfection, smooth young skin, flawlessly sculpted bodies, straight white teeth, no pain, no worry, no sadness. And yet, one of the most beautiful women I've ever known was not even five feet tall with a soft, round figure. And if her teeth were straight and white, it was because they were not her own. I never tried, tired of looking at my grandmother, the test says. Not because of her outer beauty, but because she was always looked back at me with love shining her kind blue eyes. Nana had a very hard life, having to drop out of school to raise her seven brothers and sisters after her mother abandoned the family. She married young and stayed out of the clutches of bone-crushing poverty only by relentless hard work, becoming the dead breadwinner after her husband fell prey to alcoholism and became unable to hold down a job. That tiny woman had such steadfast strength and devotion to her family that she became the foundation upon which everything else rested. We all knew that we could turn to her when trouble knocked us down and that her love would unfold us until we were strong enough to stand again. Nana's beauty came from her intimate knowledge of suffering and her seemingly endless capacity to stand with others as they pass through their own pain. Test concludes, these women have taught me to appreciate the beauty in brokenness. The power of love has allowed them to move courageously through the storms of life and come out the other end. Rich in wisdom and compassion, softened yet strengthened by these hardships, their true beauty shines through the cracks. I've told you about this cross before, but fits with the story so well. The Nova Scotia Agriculture College, which is now a Dalhousie School for Agriculture, in Fraser House. How many people have stayed at Fraser House or been in Fraser House on the campus? It is a dormitory. Okay? There's Truman, Fraser, and Chapman. And uh, Fraser in the basement, when you go in, uh, there is a bar. And there's a lounge and there's a, a few meeting areas that are there. The Atlantic Seminar of Theological Education holds their uh, annual gathering in Truro uh, each year. They've been doing so uh, for about eight years. And um, to find a chapel that's suitable for 50 to 60 people to gather 
gathered for worship uh, requires that you go down to the bottom of Fraser House, past the bar. Well, actually, the bar is still there. And you set up a chapel. Okay. Very strange place to worship. One particular year, the graphic artist Regina Cooper uh, was the chaplain, and she brought a piece together that really speaks so powerfully about this song. It was an eight-foot cross that stood stood here in the in the chapel, okay, in the bar, that made by four by fours, and it had put together. Uh, Mirrors, shattered mirrors. She made the piece by shattering mirrors and then putting them together. And she invited us at some point in time to just simply come up and take some time with the cross. And what was extraordinary is the beauty that you saw through the brokenness, the beauty that came through the cracks of not just that room, but also the people that were around it. And I dare say, when you looked at yourself, the beauty in the brokenness. Jean Vanier, the founder of L'Arche, said, you know, as I do, that we begin in weakness. We're all broken in some way. The only answer to life to love each other. The disciples were invited to do something new in the reading. They were invited to leave their nets, to fish for people. Their offering did not need to be perfect. All they had to do was catch one fish. your covenant may be written 